praise on this morning. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, glory. hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, glory, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Heavenly Jesus. Father, God, Jesus, once again, oh, Lord, for, first of all, oh, Lord, allowing us to wake, oh, Father, allowing yes, us, Lord. Oh, Lord, and my God, Jesus, having a mind, oh, Father, God, Jesus, hallelujah, to uh, indulge in your word in this morning. Thank Father, you, God, Jesus. Jesus Lord. I pray, oh, Lord, that you have your way on this morning, oh, Father, God, thank God, you, God, Lord. hallelujah, let me decrease that you may increase, oh, Lord, God, Jesus, hallelujah, my Lord and my God, Jesus, hear me, oh, Father, hallelujah, thank oh, Lord, you, Lord, God, Jesus, for the uplifting of your kingdom, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to be, um, begin, uh, we're still in St. John, I'm still in seven bishops and eight. We are kind of all over the place, ain't we? <laughs> but, 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 but God is good. God is good. He truly is. Um, I'm going to begin in uh, chapter seven. I'm still in seven, and I'm going to pick up at the um, 18th verse, and I believe I'm going to read 18 through uh, 20. 18 through 24. All right, let's say, and he said, He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keepeth the law? Why go ye about to kill? The people answered and said, Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill you. Jesus answered and said unto them, I, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me? Because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day. He said, judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment to 24. Let me go back up again, again, right there at the 18th verse. We started to say, um, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh of his, his, his glory that sent him, the same are true and unrighteousness um, is in him. Right? No unrighteousness, I'm sorry, is in him. So again, we that's just a follow-up again for the 17th verse when he was talking about um, the doctrine of being, if a man would do his, God's will, right? But then he goes on to say that, you know, if a man do his own will, and again, not the Lord's uh, will, the one that sent him to do that, right? He said no unrighteousness is in him. Why? Because he is doing what it is that the Lord uh, wants him to do, and he's not doing it, again, like we talk about all the time, it's not of his own but he is doing it as the will of God leads uh, him, right? So in the 19th verse, right, he said, Did not Moses give you the law, and yet none of you keep of the law? Why go ye about to kill me, right? Again, he's speaking on, you know, uh, everything that Moses wrote up this particular point, all the laws, and they would have understood exactly what he was speaking on uh, at this particular point. And the people uh, answered and said, Thou hast a devil who go about to kill thee, right? So Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel, right? They all marvel that the work that he have uh, done is this particular point, right? And then we pick up in the 22nd, say Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is, it is of Moses, but of the fathers, right? So again, when we get there, we can uh, begin to, I guess, backtrack just a little bit. So when we get over, we go back into uh, actually Genesis, Genesis 17, I'm beginning at verse 8, Genesis 7, uh, 17, I'm beginning at verse 8, it says, and I will give unto thee and to that seed after thee the land when thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for everlasting possession that will be their God, right? And it's saying, God said unto Abraham, thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and thy seed after thee. Every man, child, among you shall be, again, what? Circumcised, right? So, again, that is the covenant that the Lord 
uh, had set forth even with Abraham. You know, we know Moses wrote it and everything, but it began with Abraham, right? So in 11, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of, a, of the covenant betwixt me and you. Uh, it said, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be uh, in your flesh for everlasting covenant, right? Again. We, we just still, he just he just elaborating, if you will, on what it is uh, that he wants the uh, children of Israel to do, right? It said, and the uncircumcised man, uh, we're in 14, and the uncircumcised man whose uh, flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that show shall be cut off from his people. Uh, he have broken my covenant, right? Again, we're just touching base on these circumcision pieces, and I'm going to jump over uh, to the 22nd verse, still in 17. It said, and he left off talking, uh, talking with him, and God went up before Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael, his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with money, every male among the men of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the selfsame day, and God, uh, as, as God has said unto him. And Abraham was 99, uh, 90 years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. Again, and Ishmael was uh, 13 years old when he was circumcised in the flesh uh, of his foreskin, right? So again, we just see these examples, again, of the uh, circumcisions, again, that were set before, again, the children of Israel did. Of course, uh, Jesus was just uh, talking about that these individuals would uh, even circumcise, right? They would make sure that they do that uh, even on the Sabbath day, but him healing or doing those things is what they had uh, a problem with, right? I'm going to read one more. I'm going to jump over to um, Exodus uh, 4. Exodus 4. And again, this is Moses. Uh, around this time, Exodus 4 and 24, Exodus 4 and 24, it said, and it came to pass by the way in the end that the Lord met him and sought to kill him, right? Who is he talking about? He's talking about Moses this time. It said, then Sephora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and cast it at his feet and said, surely a bloody husband art thou to me. So she, uh, so, so he let him go. Then she said, a bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Again, uh, she is speaking on that because Moses, again, he was supposed to uh, circumcise his son. Uh, Moses was circumcised, so his commandment unto Moses as well, that he was supposed to do the same thing. We just read in, in 17, right? It said, in 17 and 9, God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore uh, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. And again, when we continue to read down, God is, was commanding him of these things that needed to be done. So therefore, Moses is going against what the Lord had instructed them to do, commanded them. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me say it like that. Verses instructed, commanded. So so there's a difference when there's a destruction in the commandment. You better do it, right? So therefore, that's why the Lord was about to do what? He was about to kill Moses because he didn't do what he said. This is an order, if you will. Again, we talk about that all the time. When the Lord tells you, when he gives you something specific to do, do it. Simple as that. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. There's no way around it. He wants you to do it. Or he will take care of you for not doing what it is. I ain't saying he's gonna kill you, but I ain't God either. <laughs> so I can't say exactly what he will do, but if he gave you something specific to do, therefore do it, right? So again, uh, just moving on along just a little bit, right? So um, again, as, as, as we just continue to move down, again, we was uh, at that 20, uh, we back over in St. John, right? So again, we, we, we was at that 22nd verse, and I was just reading in. I'm going to go back over it one more time. It said, Moses, therefore, 22nd, uh, 7. I'm sorry, the book of John, 7 and 22. All right. Book of John, 7 and 22. I'm picking up right there. It says, Moses, therefore, gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, right? Again, this ain't his 
doing, if you will, right? Again, it said, it said, but of the fathers. Again, I just gave you an example, but of the fathers, but we begin of the patriarchs. What are we speaking of? Or whom are we speaking of here at this particular time? I just gave you Abraham, right? It said, and ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man, right? So we in the 23rd. And if a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me, right? Because I have made a man every whit whole, again, on that Sabbath day, right? So, again, we see just the Lord just going along doing what, what it is that God do, right? You know, he, he didn't necessarily step outside of what it is that was set, but this is God. He chose to heal a man on the Sabbath day, so they sought to do what? To kill him, again, because they said that he was stepping outside of the law that was set. But this is God. He, the law that Moses wrote, who gave it to him? <laughs> right? So how he going to step outside of something that was his order from Jump Street, right? It was him that set everything up. So he can step outside, or I guess the lines, if you will, or the lines begin to get blurred, right? Because everybody wants to stay in lanes and all these things. But what I'm saying is that the God can do whatever God wants to do when God wants to do it. Simple as that. Again, we may not understand. We may not get it and all of these things, but our God does things the way that he wants to. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. And if he decides to give you insight on it, you better thanks be to God. But if he chooses not to, he is still the same God and deserves all the glory and all the honor and everything else, Elder. You just said something there that when I'm, if, see, I'm glad the Lord doesn't always tell me everything about it. So when he, when he wants you to do, because sometimes when you look at it, sometimes in your mind, your mind says, Lord, and you starting to think about it in your own mind. But you got to realize who's giving you an instruction. When God give it to you, that means you can do it. And when God tells you you're going to do some things, he don't always tell you the difficulties that's going to come with it praise god but yet we know that with him if he's with you you, you can you can find yourself making it with your problems or with night was in a problem or what you can find yourself making it with whatever he assignment he give you amen it's the lord's will and we know that god wants to have uh, his way right so again as we, we continue to just look look at this, I'm sorry about that. Um, again, we, we, we see Jesus, and again, he's talking about uh, the laws and all of those things. So, again, he was talking about thou seeketh to kill me, right? Let me go back over here. <clears throat> Okay, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I, on that 20th verse, this is the people answering and said, that is the devil who go about to kill thee, right? So again, what came across um, my mind at this particular time when he was talking about thou go about uh, uh, to kill me, and then he's also speaking of the law, uh, what come across uh, anybody's mind, I guess, at this particular point? Anybody? When, when, when he was talking about being killed then? He was saying, thou, thou seeking not, they, they're not doing the law, right? And they seek it was about to kill me. So in my mind, for me, then I'll just answer that. Mine went to the Exodus, right? When he was talking about thou shalt not kill, right? So, but, but to me, when I, when I began to think about that again, to me, it's thinking about thou shalt not kill. Of course, innocent, innocent individuals, right? Because we've seen that they did kill for war and all of these things, right? But, but when the Lord, but when, to me, when he is speaking of thou shalt not kill, it's talking about innocent individuals, right? Individuals that, you know, that, that has uh, nothing to do with certain things, that people get flared up and they just want to do certain things, right? But I'm going to just read just a little bit of this, right? I'm going to Exodus 20. Exodus 20. It said, And the God uh, spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, right? He said, uh, Thou shalt have uh, no other gods but me. Thou shalt... Uh, Thou shalt make no. Uh, thou shalt make unto thee any any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven, uh, above, or things that uh, in the earth beneath, or that is uh, under the water beneath. Right? He said, Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them, for I, 
uh, the Lord that God and we're jealous God, right? <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Now that's a, it's, a, it's a jealous God, right? It's a visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the generation unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto them. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord God in vain, for he will not hold them guiltless that take of this name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day, what, and keep it also holy. So we was also talking about that as well, right? Because they was talking about him uh, healing and all these things on the Sabbath day. But he was also telling us to keep the Sabbath day holy, right? And what is holy? It's a being separate. Or set apart, that God is holy and He is set apart from everything, and that God uh, and that is. I'm sorry, but let me slow down. Right, so God is holy and that He is set apart from everything that is not of God. It's that God's people, right, must be holy and being set aside from what sin. That's what we need to be set aside. We are holy, right? I said, you know, we're supposed to be holy individuals, so therefore we are set apart from what the world. Right? So we don't indulge in everything again, but we talk about it like everything that the world is in, right? So we are need to be set apart. Yeah, we have our friends, we have our families that indulge in certain activities, right? And we are not to indulge in those certain things, right? And we know what those um, things that they indulge in that we should not be doing, right? So therefore, we should be holy and set apart, right? Because as long as we're doing that, then they're going to look at us or our hope or our prayer is, is that our lives, right, will open up the eyes of them and say, you know, again, they used to be this particular way because we were all born in sin and shaped what? And iniquity, right? So not saying that we haven't done anything, right? It's just that once we receive the spirit of Hashita La Mohana, once we receive the spirit of God, Come on now. And say he is holy. So what do we have? The individuals that have the spirit of God, right? We have his spirit now. So now what that do? That separates us. Or should. Let me say it that way. It should separate us from the things that we used to do, right? It's all past tense. Used to do. Right? It's not what we're doing now. We ain't going still meeting up with Joe Blow down at the club and all these things, right? Come on now. How you going to uh, be an example for an individual, but you sitting in the same places as them and want to tell them what they're doing wrong, but you sitting right there next to them. Come on now. Be ye holy. Be ye holy. I was just here at school that saying the scripture said, be holy as I am holy. Amen. God said, be ye holy. So that lets us know if God said it, we can be holy. Amen. We can live holy. <coughs> we don't have to get and be in, and the Bible says love not the world. Amen. Not of the things that are of the world. We don't have to indulge in everything that's not that's not godly. Amen. He said, come out and be separate, Amen. said the Lord. Amen. Amen. And 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 that's what our uh Lord now God wants for us. Uh the biggest thing for me is is that piece right there when when I just my mind just kind of went uh, again to the Ten Commandments, right? And, and that part right there, that, that holy piece, right? Be ye holy, right? Is what he requires of us. He's telling us to be that because he is that. And then when you, and, and again, I think that was even in, I can't remember which chapter, but we know that that was in the Old Testament when he said it. But when you look at it, as it continues to go on into the New Testament, I just said it. So he's saying that to them then. But look at us now, because the Holy Spirit had not yet fallen at that particular time. So now when he is saying that, be ye holy. Come on now. It is a difference now. He said it, and he meant it the same way he did to them in the Old Testament. But to me, it's a resonate in a different space for us. Come on now. In a different space for us. Be ye holy. For I am holy. Come on now. So that is a responsibility, if you will. That is a responsibility. Come on now. It is a higher standard, if you will. No, you're not above the other individuals, right? Come on now. We ain't above nobody. But your life, your decision making, and all of these things, because he wants full control. Come on now. And that's for all of us. I'm talking about even the individuals that have not yet received the spirit of God. He wants full control. 
So part of the reason, come on there. Part of the reason why you may not have the spirit of God, because you ain't surrendered. Amen. Come on now. It is something that is holding you back. It could be a stronghold. It is various things that can stop us, come on now, from receiving the spirit of God. But he can also show you. Yes, sir. He can show you what it is that's holding you back from doing what? Receiving him. It's not an it. The Holy Ghost is not an it. Yes, it is a him. Yes. That is the spirit, come on now, of our Lord and our God. And that is his ultimate Ultimate plan, come on now, is for us to be in eternity with him. But we just because we receive him, again, we talk about that too. It don't mean that you automatically go on to glory, right? Come on now, you still got a job to do, and you still have a life, come on now, to live before him. Be ye holy. Come on now. Come on now, be ye holy. Excuse me one second. Because he is holy. That, that, is, that is his requirement, if you will, right? For us to live that life uh, before him and for those other individuals, right? Because my mind, I just, I'm trying to move past that part right there. But, but to me, that is, come on now. Come on now. Our Lord now God wants to do, come on now. He say, in the last days, he will pour out of his spirit. In the last days, come on now, and we living in them right now. He will pour out of his spirit. And us that was at convocation, we say just, come on, a smidge. Hey, glory. Come on now. My Lord. We, the, the Bible even talked about on the day of Pentecost, you talking 5,000. Right? But, but, but we had the pleasure of, of I believe, in, in 810. In 810, yes, sir. four souls. So come on now. And 810 was four souls. The day of Pentecost, 5,000. Come on now. So we say just a smidge. Come on now, of what our Lord and our God can really do. But again, you had individuals that were still tearing, individuals that saying they want the Holy Ghost and all of these things. But again, what I just say, it's something that's holding you back. It is something that is stopping you from receiving what it is that he wants, come on now, to freely give unto you. Huh? It's the breaking of that heart. It's the breaking of that heart, right? Come on now, I think even <laughs> further down in, 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 uh, in, the old, in, in the New Testament, we're talking about the circumcision of the heart. That's right. Come on now, we're talking about the circumcision of the flesh, of the foreskin, but it also talked about the circumcision of the heart, right? Yes. So therefore, the Lord can be able to do what? To do a work in you, huh? Break up that stony heart, if you will. Come on now. And make it a heart of what? Flesh. flesh. Right? Break up that stony heart and able to give you of, uh, 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 um, a heart of flesh. That is what our Lord and our God is able to do. But again, like we always say, it is up to him. Go ahead, Elder. The scripture says that Psalm 50 was a broken and a contract. Hi, hallelujah. Thou Jesus. will not despise, O oh God. Amen. So when your heart gets like a day <coughs> preached on um. Friday, Friday night, but Amen. Um, about um, I forgot the exact thought, but but um, um, God watch 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 hard or something on that line. But um, but when your heart is right, the Bible says God which knoweth the heart, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as unto us, even as He did unto us. God knows the heart, and if there's something in you that that's not right, and and most of the time you know what it is. So there's something that we just don't want to give up. We know most of the time we know what it is. We know what it, we have. Some of them know what it is. But listen, it's not worth giving up your soul over. Amen. Whatever it is, it's not worth losing your soul over. No, 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 no. It's not worth it. So if you got to give it up, give it up. Praise God that the most important thing is your soul. Amen. And and one and I can't and I can't. Uh, remember exactly word for word what uh, the scripture just came across by man. You can gain the whole world, lose your whole soul, right? Because yes. he was just talking about that in, 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 in a sense, right? Yes. Man gaining the world, again, that working towards everything that is in this world, 
that will perish. Come on now. And losing no, no. yourself. Huh? Come on now. Come on now. Um, so, so, so again, when we look at that, that right there, us as individuals, again, why would we give, come on now, why would we give up, come on, for the ones that have them, for the ones that have them, why would you give up what, you have eternal life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You have eternal life, and you mean to tell me that you're going to do that? No, sir. That you're going to turn your back on your Lord and your God? No, 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 come on now. No. Oh, we do that. Do that Michael Jackson, that backsliding, if you will. Come on now. Come on now. You're going to do some moonwalking. Huh? Away from the Lord. Come on now. He done, he done saved you. And you mean to tell me that you're going to turn your eternity. You can't even. Come on now. A hundred years to us in this body is a long time. Eternity supersedes all of that. But you mean to tell me that you're going to lose your whole soul to gain the world. Huh? Come on now. And I ain't just talking about these materialistic things because people are in the world. So, so when I refer to that as well, we're talking about, again, those family, those friends, and that other F word, fun. Fun. So you are willing to give up eternal life or and or not receive eternal life. Come on now. The ones that have it, the ones that have not had it. So either way, you are willing to give that up for a roll in the hay. Come on now. Come on now. This God that we serve, he is, it is so many words. That I was starting to say a word, but it's so many words <laughs> to describe who he is or what he is to you. Because, again, we talk about that personal Relationship. When you was talking, the scripture that came to my mind is in Galatians 5 and 1. It says, Stand therefore in the liberty of what Christ has made us free and be not entangled. Mm, the scripture says, the key words, again with the yoke of bonds. In other words, that God has set us free. Tell us, don't go back into sin. Amen. Don't be entangled My Lord. again. Amen. Because that word again, that means we once were entangled. There you go. God, hallelujah, has set us free. Amen. Scripture Amen. Say he that the sun set free is free indeed. Amen. So Amen. don't be entangled again. Um, trying to find, give me one second. I'm sorry about that. I'm trying to look at something. You know, I don't know all scripture off the top of my head. I was trying to find the correct one, but I was he just brought up kind of my mind went when Paul was even talking to, and I believe it's in Corinthians, I believe, when he was talking about such were some of you. Was it in, uh, I won't think it was in 15. As Paul says, such were some of you. I'm using Google, y'all. Just pay, pay, pay. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> 6 and 11. <laughs> six and eleven. That's what it says. Let me see and if we go read it for me, Elder, please. Six and eleven. Six and eleven. Six and eleven. Six nine. Okay. It say, um, "Know ye not the unrighteous? Unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God." Say, "Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind." No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, right? Come on, I can speak to that one right there. I just stop for a second. Come on there. <laughs> no drunkards. I can speak to that one right there. God is good. Come on there. I, I, I once was, right? Come on there. Uh, 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 um, right? It said no, no rivalers, no uh, extortion, uh, extortioners, no uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God. Sorry about that. And such were some of you, but ye are washed but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name. Come on now. Something about that part right there. But the, in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit, come on now, of God. Come on now. That right there. That right there. One more time. I, I just, just, just that ninth part, right? And you know now that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, but be not deceived. Come on now. And then he give you a list. 
And this ain't all of it, right? But it gives you a list of various things that can do what? From keeping you from entering in the kingdom of God, right? That 11 for, it said, uh, shall inherit the kingdom of God, right? Come on now. But in that 11th verse, right, it say, um, justify in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of God. Come on now. Justify. My Lord and my God, Jesus. It is something about that Lord and our God. Again, we were talking about it, it is him that saves. Come on now. It is him that does. This walk that we have to walk, right? Come on now. It's our Lord and our God that goes before us, but those individuals that do not have him. That, that is a, for me, that is something that every single time I get up because it's so near and dear to me. Right? Because I knew of the muck and the dirt that I was in. And all I keep on saying is if he can do it for Brian. Come on now. My mother, she know me. I'm talking about been done that. Sink me. So all the stories that I use up here for testimonies and all that, seen it firsthand. I'm talking about I had her eyes laid directly on me. You understand me? Of me in that. So that is why when I think about and do all the things that I, I, I constantly talk about the Lord saving individuals, come on, man. This is real. He did it for Brian. He can do it for you, too. The, the, who I'm talking to ain't the individual that had him right now. I'm talking about to the individual that do not have him. And I say it all the time because that is something that is near and dear to me. The individuals that don't have him. Let it go. Whatever it is that's holding you back. We just talked about receiving eternity. Come on now. Paul even talked about giving you a whole list of individuals that was doing things in sin. Come on now. Homosexuality. He said infeminate. Come on now. Again, that fun piece. Come on now. Y'all think that's fun. But the Lord now God, he can free you from that as well. Come on now. That is a that is a stronghold. Huh? He made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Y'all heard that one before. But that's real. He did not. Come on now. Because two things. Come on. Yeah. I, I know they like to use the one. You could use an animal. We're not animals, but let's just use them for instance. I ain't seen two males or two female animals doing anything. Because guess what? We were meant to reproduce. And two males and two females can't reproduce a thing. That's Guess what they can produce? Another infeminate because they letting them adopt them. That's what they do. Another spirit. Now they, they, they allow them to bring another child into their home and let them see that these two same genders can cohabitate. And now guess what they done did to this child? They, now this child goes on and it just begins a cycle. It's a cycle. But our Lord and our God, again, Paul just spoke on, as such, <laughs> come on now, was some of you. Huh? Meaning that we all have sin. Yes, sir. I just said we were all born in sin and shaped in what? In iniquity. So somebody has did something. Again, my list may be a little bit longer than yours. Hey, somebody list, I can guarantee you it's a whole lot longer than mine because there were some things that I would do and something to hold up now. That governor, if you will, it's something, hold up now. I ain't doing that dead. I ain't, that, that's where I draw the line, if you will. Come on now. I ain't trying to go to jail now. <laughs> I may do something, but I ain't trying to do no, I ain't trying to go in there for no amount of time here. Yeah, so, so what I'm saying is, again, we are talking about the Lord having his way, that law, if you will. Again, we talked about, again, I jumped in the Ten Commandments, be holy, therefore, because he is holy, right? Come on in. And he was talking about keeping that, that, that uh, Sabbath day holy. So, again, my mind went to, again, us, right? Come on now. Again, we have to be holy. We have to be the example, right? We have to be all of these things. And, again, like I said, I test in that Corinthians for Paul. When he is talking to the Corinthians and he's giving them a list of things that therefore, come on now. And I mean, come on, look at it. He, same thing that was going on then is going on now. The same exact thing that Paul was writing about then, it ain't changed. It just got worse. It just got worse. Come on, before Paul even got here, we, we could talk about what? Sodom and Gomorrah. 
homosexuality was in it then. They said, bring him out here so we can do as we want with him. These are men talking. Let him out here so we can do what we want with him. Come on now. Our Lord and our God, he is able. The scripture said, I am God, and I change not. Amen. So no matter what, the laws change. Amen. And the laws are so, that you can't even, today you cannot even say nothing. No, man. I disagree with that. Amen. Yeah, I, I love them as people. Yes, yes. Too. yes. We love them because they're souls too. But I have made in my mind I, when they ever, ever come down to me asking, for, I'm going to tell you what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. And Amen. he can call me all kind of what you want. But listen, the word of God doesn't change. Amen. The Bible tells us, praise God, that these things are abomination Amen. in the sight of God. Amen. Amen. No matter who, who don't like it, no matter who's trying to justify it, Congress trying to, the president trying to justify it. Amen. It does not matter to God. Amen. It's still wrong. Amen. Amen. And even in your own household. That's it. Sometimes even your own family. You could dig. You find these things. Yeah, yeah. But you still got to let them know. The Bible said, as for me in my house. That's it. Some things ain't going to, I ain't going to say about my house is safe, but some things that the world goes wrong with, it ain't going to come in here. Amen. No, sir. Amen. Amen. Because I got to take a stand with what God said. Amen. Amen. I agree. Uh, and, and I'm not, let me, let me say this. I'm not beating down right. anybody. I'm, I'm not. I'm not doing that, right? And, and if anybody go back and watch this later on, let me put that out there right now. That's not what I'm doing. I'm giving you what the Word of God says, right? And all I'm saying is that you are in a stronghold, whether you believe what I'm saying or not. I'm letting you know that you are, and the Lord now God can free you from it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not beating you down. Whatever Congress passed or whatever, I ain't got nothing to do with none of that, right? Do I agree with it? No. Right? Because I, I just said that the Lord made Adam and Eve. That is simple. A male and female. That is his order. Right? And I received of his spirit. So therefore, guess what? I'm going to abide by what it is. This is his word. It's not Brian. I ain't make none of these words up out of this book. I ain't put it in here. But I just wanted to put it out there to let an individual know if they come back at a later date and watch this, let me let you know. I'm giving you what it is that's in this word of God. I am not trying to beat down or bash anybody for your decision. Because, again, that is your decision that you have made. Huh? It's not the Lord's. Because if we was depending on him, if we was leaning on him, or we was allowing him to help make our decisions, then therefore we would know what? Right from definitely wrong. Simple as that. Simple as that. But, but again, again, I touched base on these particular things. There was other things in there, too. I wasn't just talking about homosexuality. <laughs> I talked about a drunkard, and guess what? I raised my hand because I was also that. So let's not get caught up on the fact that I was talking about this. But God, come on now. Like he said, it's a denomination unto him, right? Huh? It is not what his order is. It's simple as that. So I can't. I can't sit up here and, you know, go along or, or, or not speak. Come on now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Not speak on what it is that the Lord dropped in my mind. Come on now. Because guess who got an answer for that? I do. Not nobody else in here. Because I'm the one with the mic. Come on now. <laughs> but that's a reality, right? I like to make jokes and all. Keep it going. But, but what I'm saying is, look, we ain't going to spend too much time. I keep on moving now. I'm done. It's over right. with, right? Let's keep it moving. But, but, but again. Lord, Brother Brian. Brian Sister Murray. Praise him. How are you? How are you? I'm good. God is good. Yeah. yeah. I've been listening listen to what you, what you say. What you and, and if we go according to the word, Amen. we won't make mistakes. Amen. It is when we choose to be disobedient. It is when we choose to do our own thing. That's when we get in trouble. The Bible Amen. says for the wages of sin is death. Amen. But the gift of God gift of is God. eternal Hallelujah. life. Amen. And the Bible also says, whosoever will, let him come. But Amen. some of us don't want to come because we're comfortable in our sins. Amen. If we get pleasure out of it, it makes us happy. And things we just don't want to surrender to the Lord. The, the song says, all to Jesus I surrender. And Amen. if we don't surrender, we are under the tutelage. We are under control by the enemy. 
And trust me, the enemy will hold on to you longer than you want. He will take you farther than you want to go. And he will not let you go because he wants your soul. So we have to remember, whatever your sinful state is, all you got to do, the Bible says, is repent. And once you repent and you are truly godly sorrow, sorrow, you will make a change. Amen. And it would be for the better because God is not out to hurt. He's not out to make us feel miserable. He is a God of life and love. But he also can be a consuming fire. And we tend to forget that part. Amen. You know? Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Murray. Anybody else? You're welcome. The scripture also says, in fact, what it says, all of righteousness is sin. Oh, it says all. Oh. Amen. Unrighteousness is sin. Now, even if you're a person, you, you could be a morally good person, but you still was born in sin. Amen. You still was born in sin. Just like in, uh, Nicodemus, he was a good man. But Jesus still told you, you must be born again of the water and the spirit. Amen. So it does not matter whether you're a good, decent, everyday person, which is, praise God, which is, we'll thank God for that. We have those people, but you still got to repent. Amen. You still got to be born again because if you still die and not saved, you're still going to the lake of fire. Amen. So a lot of people don't want to hear about hell these days. But listen, <laughs> be, we've got to be for real. If we don't die, we don't get right with God. If we die in sin, that's exactly where we're going. Amen. 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 Um, again, like, like I said, um, I agree with Elder, definitely Sister Mary. Uh, th those scriptures definitely are out there and, and Hey, these are all decisions that we choose to make at the end of the day. That's, that's what we do. We, we have a choice. So it's up to us on whether or not what we want to do. Either, like you said, you, you can have the gift of life. Come on now. The gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. So, again, that's what um, we should be all striving for. So, again, all those things that are holding us uh, back, he can get those things out of us, right? But we have to allow him to, again, it's that surrender piece. So whatever state that you're in, whatever state that you're in, he can get it out of you. Come on now. He loves us all. He loves us all. Even in the state that we're in, that even when we're in sin, he still loves you. Don't mean that he have to accept <laughs> what it is that you try to present to him. Come on now. Talk about Cain and Abel. Right, and one tried to present one sacrifice was good and one sacrifice was not good because it was the way that it was presented unto him. Come on now, he's not going to accept just anything. So when you hear individuals or, you know, uh, oh, God, God knows my heart, right? You, you're right, he do. That's, that's the part that we don't, he does know of the heart. The scriptures talk about it. God know, God, he who know of the heart, bear them witness. He bear you witness doing what? Giving you the Holy Ghost. That's him bearing the witness. But for you to be stuck in a state of in sin or, like I say, being in the infeminate homosexuality and you still say, man, God loves me. He does. But he does not accept what it is that you're presenting to him. It is simple as that. You have churches. You have homosexual. I see him in D.C. I work in D.C., and I see him all the time, the billboards and all that. Come on now. But our Lord and our God, come on now. That, that is who I depend and who I lean on. And guess what? I just continue to pray. I continue to pray because prayer, come on now, it is able to break the chain. It is able to free the individual that is stuck in that particular state that they're in, right? And again, we're not talking about just homosexuality. We're talking about all sin. He is able to break the chain. He's able to loose you. He's able to release you from that stronghold. Whatever it is that we have that is holding us. That's that key word right there, that holding piece. So something is keeping you right there. We have to do some eternal examination. What is it? Again. Lord, what is it, right? Because we're not going to see it for ourselves because we are in a state of the stronghold. So we have to go before the Lord 
And we have to ask the Lord to open up our eyes, remove, hallelujah, Jesus, the scales from our eyes. Come on now. Remove them, Lord. Because guess what? This life will end. Huh? This life will end. We, uh, man, look, we say it, we know it, and we say it, and again, we let it roll up our tongue, and we, we, we all know that we're going to leave this place. But we're so caught up in the now. We are caught up in right now. We're caught up in everyday stuff. Huh? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom. Come on now. Of God. So we're seeking that versus seeking the house, versus seeking the car, versus seeking the better job, huh? Versus seeking that family. Come on now. He will give you of all of those things, but seek ye first mm -hmm. the kingdom. Right. Thank you, mother, and his righteousness. Seek you there first. Come on now. Seek that. Yes. He will add. Come on now. Unto those. Come on now. He do above and beyond. More abundantly. More than we could ever ask or think. Come on now. Come on now. If, is that Ephesians 3 and 20. Now I might have got it mixed up a little bit. But y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> Go ahead. Else. Scripture says. <laughs> in all thy ways acknowledge him. Amen. And he shall direct thy path. Amen. See when is it acknowledge him. Amen. And all you acknowledge him. In other words, seek him first. Amen. Seek his way of doing things. Amen. He shall direct Amen. thy path. Amen. And that word path has a natural one. He shall direct your path. And Amen. when when you when you when you make up your mind, I'm gonna seek the Lord. Amen. I'm gonna follow his direction. Amen. And sometimes his way of directing you, you gotta you got in your mind and say, Lord. Well, in your own mind, just tell me, why am I going this way? Amen. And he ain't going to always give you the answer. That's it. Because Lord knows sometimes if he give us the answer, Lord knows we would, we would want to just go about it. No, but I'm glad he don't give me the answer all Amen. the time. Amen. Amen. But his ways are the right way. Amen. Amen. I like that one. But I think it was several years ago, Bishop said, just close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes and hold on. Because you don't know where he get ready to take you to. Close your eyes. Huh? And open up your hand and let him lead you. Yes, sir. Come on now, because if he's going before you, you probably don't want to look at some of the places that he's going to send you anyway. Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> just let him go ahead and just close your eyes. Come on now, Lord. I don't know where you're taking me. I don't know what you get ready to have for me to do. Huh? Because that's another key piece. It is a work to do. Yes, it, is. it is a work to do. Yes. It's not for us just to be in here. Singing songs, hallelujah, and all that, just to hear, just to hear the word of God. It's, that's not just it. We have a work yes. to do. We have a help to be unto our Lord and our God. But it's him that is orchestrating everything else. It is him. We out in front. Come on, we want, I want to do this. I want to pull him in. No. No. You let him lead you. You let him get, he will give you exactly what it is to say. My God, my God, my God. He can start up conversations. He is a God. Come on now. I think we, we still put him in this box. I ain't lying. I think we all, and I'm guilty. I'm going to say me too. We put him in this little box, and we just leave him there. Huh? He is out, way outside of that. We can't contain him. Come on now. You can't contain him. He can do whatever he want to. And we, yeah, we say it, but do we really believe it? He really can do what he really wants to. Come on. He is the creator of all things. So we're going to put the creator in a box. How are we going to do that? Well, I think he's going to do it this way. You will never figure out God. You will never figure him out. Sunday after Sunday when I get up here, I think I, he about to go this way. And then he go another way. I never figure him out. I done learned uh, probably about two, three months ago. You know what, Lord? Just, man, I, I, I looked at it. <laughs> you just got it from there. I ain't, because I, I, 
Because because in my mind, I think I got to come this way. I'm thinking this. I'm laying out. Come on now. I'm sitting here trying to lay out something that is his. This is his word and his work. I can't lay out nothing for him. This is He do it the way he want to. He do it the way he want to. I had back in 20, this is right when COVID was about to get real heavy. It was in February. I had a cousin that's passed, right? And my family came to me. Oh, we want you to do the obituary. What? You want me to do what? You want me to do? You, nah, man. I, but the Lord kind of laid it on me. And I'm like, all right, Lord, then if this is the case, then, you know, uh, give me what it is. And this, I'm on my way home from the hospital. I get home. He dropped scripture in my mind. All right, boom. I get to looking at it. All right, let me do this, do this, do this. So I'm at work type of job I got, depending on what route I'm on, I got time to look at my word and write down some things and study it, basically at work. And uh, I mean, I'm trying to tell y'all in my mind, all I'm doing, I'm thinking about my, my, my cousin, right? And I'm laying all these things out, right? And the Lord said, what you doing? <laughs> he said, what you doing? He said, don't you do that. This is my word. And this is my work. I'm hands off now. But I didn't even realize how engulfed that I got in trying to bring this message out. This is. But I was caught up in because it was family and all of these things. And I'm thinking I'm, but I didn't think I was doing nothing wrong in my mind. But I thank the Lord. Come on now. He said, what is you doing? What are you doing? This is mine. When it's time. Come on now. I'm going to give you what it is that you need. I ain't saying don't study it. But you the basic guy the book sitting right here, boy. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, and that's for us, all the individuals that the Lord chooses to use in, in, in this particular place right here, we know bishops say it all the time, when the Lord has something for you to say and or do, he going to do it. You just sit back and watch him work. That's all I do now. That's all I do at this particular point now. I just sit back and just let him work. And I go back sometimes and listen to him be like, man, I said that. <laughs> but God is good, though. But I thank him for allowing me to be in the place that I am right now. Come on now. Even if he didn't even bring me up here, the fact that I was saved was it? Come on now. That was enough for me. Amen. That was enough for me. Amen. The fact that I was saved alone. Huh? Oh, my God. Huh? Come on now. This is something different up here. <laughs> this is something totally different up here. But, but God is truly good. Come on now. Um, I, like I said, I try my best to, to allow him to do what he do. I don't write no more books down. <laughs> because, because, again, this is, this is what he has for us. It's his people. He know what he wants to do and all of these things. So, again, as we, as we were talking, we, again, we began, we was in John chapter 7. So we moved through John chapter 7, and the Lord kind of moved us through several other scriptures. But, again, the biggest one that come across my mind or the one that I keep on honing on to is be ye holy. Come on now. Sister Nikki. Excuse me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> when you talk about the scripture, um, be ye holy for I am holy, right? Yes. So one time I was thinking about that. Yes, I think so. Um, thinking about that scripture and um, so not that we don't find things difficult, of course, because there is opposition and um, flesh being one of those things and just um, other circumstances. But so you take something like sports, right? You know how BJ plays uh, football, right? Mm -hmm. And you want him to do well, right? Let's say you were a football player and you, had, you were amazing, right? Mm -hmm. You can't actually take you and put it in him, Amen. right? Amen. You're, you can teach him, you can give him tools, you can have him have training and different things like that, right? So we have our tools. But you can't, the most you can do is shout from the sideline, use what I showed you Amen. or whatever, right? But you can't take you and your 100% skill set and put you in him, right? Exactly, exactly. And you may have a son that don't have no skills at all, even though you did, right? <laughs> but when I look at um, the Lord talking about be ye holy for I am holy, Amen. the fact that we have God inside of us, there right? It's not, we have the tools that he equipped us with. We have, you know, Sunday school, we have our Bible, we have this, we have that. But we have him inside of us, Amen. right? So. It's not just a matter of um, use what I gave you or use what I showed you. Use me, it ain't you know. I'm right use me. Amen. I'm inside of you, and it just makes that scripture more attainable for me. Amen. And again, not that it's easy or not that you know I don't struggle with certain things, but be ye holy, for I am holy. Like I'm in you. Amen. You can do this. Amen. 
you know. Amen. 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 Thank you, that. sister nigga. Appreciate that. No, that that's real. That's that's a reality because he is in us. And we have to allow him. That's the key, like you say. Like you, all of us got struggles. You ain't the only one. Come on now. But we have this the reason why we got the struggle, because we in flesh. That's the reason why we got the struggle. You in flesh. Flesh want what flesh want. Flesh is insatiable. You ain't gonna please it. Huh? Paul talk about pulling this flesh down under subjection. Come on now. But this is every that is forget every day. Man, this is minute by minute. <laughs> I was about to say every day, but this is minute by minute because something can change in a split of a second. Yes, and that makes you fly off that handle. I can't believe they said that to me. To this flash. That's what they said it to. Yeah, they said it to you. Now what you going to do? Right? Come on now. You know what I mean? And that's the place that we're in because we're in this flesh every day. We don't want that word. I can't believe you disrespected me. I used to be one there. I don't even care no more, man. I'm for real, man. I don't even get my. You can call me. I don't even care. Just don't put your hands on me, though. That I promise you. That one right there. You can call me whatever you want, though. Now, that right. But don't act like it's, it, it, it is. It is something about me and my personal space, as I like to call it. Because if I can reach my hand out and you too close, look at they go my space. You too close to me, because I feel like you threatening me. That's always been a thing. Because you could lash out, sell them things, but when you come at me like you get ready to do something, now hold up, now. I'm saying. I'm saved, but I'm going to defend myself. Don't get that part twisted with me. I, am, I will defend myself. Now, I ain't going to start it. And Lord willing, <laughs> with him in me, <laughs> I'm going to finish it, though. Go ahead, sister. <laughs> Verse 3. To piggyback off, this, off the sister Nikki, I was just thinking as I'm reading the Gospels and the Word of God, he says, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen how he demonstrated, he practiced that as he is our greatest example of how to do that every day. Amen. He showed us, even when, you know, all of the obstacles that the Lord Jesus Christ had to endure Amen. for us Amen. as he went and he walked around the earth and he showed us how to love and how to be towards one another. Amen. He showed his disciples. Amen. He practiced it for us. And Holiness is a way of life. It's the way that we have to live every single day. It's Amen. a way of life. It's Amen. not a denomination. It's not a doctrine. It's the way that God has shown us that we have to live. And we can do it. Amen. And the only way you can live holy is to have the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have to have the Holy Ghost, the Amen. Spirit Amen. of the Lord Jesus Christ in you. Amen. You can't live holy without the Holy Amen. Ghost. It's Amen. impossible. Amen. That's why the Holy Ghost is so important, and I thank God for it. Amen, amen, amen. Definitely need that. You can't make it in this life. And you don't get to go to the next one. You can't make it in this life, and you don't get to go to the next one. Again, we talked about leaving here. That's the reality of it. We will leave here. But as long as, come on, we live them right, allowing the Lord to abide and lead us and all of these things, you can make it. You may don't think that you can't, but you can make it through this life. Come on now. You can make it. Come on now. But we have to depend on him. We have to lean on him. We have to allow him to do what? Have his way. That's that biggest piece right there. Allowing him to have his way in our life. Huh? He's going to send you places. He's going to tell you some things that's come on there. Sometimes he might tell you something to tell somebody, and you sitting there like, man, I done had that happen to me. <laughs> I'm telling you. Go tell them someone. So, oh, come on. Come on, Lord, please. Don't. I don't want to do that one. Yeah. Yeah. You can miss me with that one. I, please. And then, guess what? Because I tell y'all I'm big on fleecing. Well, if you want me to do it, <laughs> if you want me to do it, Lord, then I get to fleecing them, right? Come on now, because I want to make sure that it's you and not me. Because sometimes we could be in prayer or we can, we can be in our feelings so much that we'll say, well, the Lord said, and he ain't said a word. It's us being in our own feelings. So that's part of me, though. That's part of me. That's why I do what I do. That's just, I ain't telling y'all to do what I do. This is for Brian. 
Guinness personal walk. So my personal thing that I like to do between me and my Jesus, I fleece him. Because it because I ain't trying to step outside of uh, you have for me to say this to this individual, then I right. Now, it ain't every time I do it, because sometimes I'm telling you without a shadow of a doubt, I know. When he told me to stop writing the book, I ain't had to ask him, did you want me to stop doing it? I knew. So certain things that he had told me to do, I know hands down that it's him. But I guess sometimes, you know, when you're in this flesh, you're trying to, you know, uh, differentiate whether or not it's you or him, right? But he is a God. Come on now. And you got to watch that too now. Amen. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh. God told him. Amen. Go to Nineveh. Amen. Guess what? He didn't want to go to Nineveh. He ended up getting in trouble. Yeah. Amen. So the bottom line, when you know what's God telling Amen. me, God telling me to come to you, that's it. Speak to you. I'm coming to you. Yeah. And speaking to you what thus says the Lord. Yeah. Now you know what thus says the Lord. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, God knows how to put you down. Amen. Amen. And Jonah was in the belly of the well. How many nights? Three. Three. Yeah. And he, and trust me, he didn't like. It. Amen. So when the Lord tells you to do something, come on there, and you know it's the Lord. Amen. Get up, get out your feelings, Amen. and do what God says, because we don't know that person might be ready to leave here. Amen. 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 We it's don't been. know what's coming out of the road, we don't. We don't. So we got to do what God says. Get yeah. out your feelings. Yeah. And we, but we got to know how to approach people too. Amen. Amen. Um, it was it was one individual that the Lord had told me to. Uh, speak to and and I started out with uh, what the Lord said X Y and Z and and what He said to me was if you didn't start out with that I wouldn't have heard nothing you said if you wouldn't have started out with what the Lord told me to da 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 they would never heard me but I thank the Lord because before I approached the individual I, I mean the Lord was clear as a bet now this one, again this one wasn't no fleece and I already knew. But before I approach the individual, Lord, God, she tell her, Mohana. That's the one I always say, Lord, you guide my tongue. You guide this conversation. So as soon as he answered the phone, hey, what's up, man? Hey, look, man, the Lord, da 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 he said he would have never heard me had I not started off with that. But the Lord directed that whole entire conversation, right? He directed that conversation. And I thank the Lord that I was obedient, right? At least for that part. The Lord got it from there, right? Because he, I did my part. Whatever he's going to save or whatever he's going to do, now I believe he will, uh, but whatever he's going to do, I can't dwell on or I can't figure out or spend this time trying to figure out what our God going to do. I can't do that. So when he give us a task, right, make sure it's him, go do it, and keep it moving. Ain't no need of you spending all this time waiting to see the results of it. <laughs> it ain't your work. It's him that's going to get the glory. Because if you spent all that time waiting on the results, guess what? Now it point back to what I did. And then I got nothing to do with you. All you all need to be able to do is be that vessel and move the way that he say move. Come on now. Come on now. One planet, one water. God give him the increase. Thank you for watering me, mother. Thank you for planting in me, mother. <laughs> That's our thing. I'm sorry about that, y'all. But look, I, I pray that we got something out of the message on today. Again, uh, we talked about the Lord doing what he wants to do. Again, I wasn't thinking about nothing that we were sitting up here talking about on today. So I pray the Lord had his way. I pray that we all got something out of the message on today. And I pray that our glory and our God goes before us. Thank you all uh, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, God, Jesus, my Lord and my God. We thank you, O oh Father God, Jesus, thank for the you, message that uh, took place on this morning, O oh Father God, Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray, O oh Lord God, Jesus, hallelujah, that your word, O oh Lord, hallelujah, falls on good ground, O oh Lord God, Jesus, hallelujah. I pray, O oh Father God, Jesus, for the services, O oh Father God, Jesus, that is going to take place throughout your entire body. Come on now. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're not talking about just a newborn lighthouse, Lord. Hallelujah. We are talking through your entire body. My Lord and my God, Jesus, I'm praying to someone, O oh Father God, Jesus, hallelujah. 
hallelujah, receives your spirit on today. Oh, glory, hallelujah, Jesus, my Lord and my God. Oh, my Lord and my God, that someone's eyes get open on today, Lord. Hallelujah. At the very least, they go down in water in Jesus' name on today. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord and my God, Jesus, let someone's hearts get pricked on today, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord and my God, Jesus, because it's not your will that any should perish. My Lord and my God, Jesus, but all come to repentance. Oh, my Lord and my God, Jesus. Hallelujah. It is eternal life that you're trying to give out. Oh, Lord God, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just let those individuals, even us, Lord, that have your spirit, to surrender unto your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Oh, and I praise your holy name on today, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I'm grateful and I'm thankful, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Five before and eleven for service. God bless you.